Let's talk about what transformations would map parallel lines onto each other or perpendicular lines onto each other. First, of course, we should review what it means to be parallel. Here's a line. Could you draw a line that's parallel to it? What information would you need to know about this line in order to know that it's parallel? Well, you would need to know its slope. Remember that parallel lines have equal slopes, and this line has a slope of up 1, right 3, up 1, right 3, or down 1 and left 3. So any line that you could draw that also goes up 1 and right 3, up 1 and right 3, or down 1 and left 3, any of these lines would all be considered parallel to the original line because they all have the same slope. What if I asked you to draw a perpendicular line instead? What slope would it have? Well, if the original line has a slope of up 1 and right 3, we need the opposite reciprocal of that. So this is a positive 1 over a positive 3. The opposite reciprocal would be negative 3 over positive 1. So I could go down 3 and right 1, down 3 and right 1, or I could do the opposite and go up 3 and left 1. So any of these lines that all have a slope of negative 3, down 3, and right 1, any of these lines would be perpendicular to the original, because they have a slope that is the opposite reciprocal of the given line slope. And what we'll talk about today is the fact that a parallel line is represented by a translation. So if I want to get from one line to another line, knowing that the result has to be a parallel line, then it would be a translation, which hopefully you remember that from middle school, that a translation is just moving something up, down, left, or right. However, if I want to create a perpendicular line from the given line, it's going to be a rotation of 90 degrees. Again, hopefully you remember that from middle school, a rotation is turning something around a point. For example, if you look at the hands on a clock, the hour hand rotates 90 degrees from noon till 3 o'clock, or from 3 o'clock till 6 o'clock. That's another 90 degrees. And when you think about those hands, if it's noon, it's pointing straight up. And if it's 3 o'clock, then it's pointing straight to the right. So that would be a horizontal and a vertical line, which we know are perpendicular to each other. And you can visually see on that clock that it rotated 90 degrees, because if you had both of those measurements on there at the same time, both a noon measurement and a 3 o'clock measurement, they would make a right angle. So that's an easy way to show to yourself that a rotation of 90 degrees would make a perpendicular line. So let's take a look at a few examples and determine whether or not the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither, if that means they're just intersecting. And based on that information, what kind of transformation would it take to get from line M to line N? In order to determine any of that information, we need to know the slopes of both lines. And that's quite easy to do when they've been graphed in the coordinate plane, because you can just count. Just pick any point you want to on the line and count the distance vertically and horizontally. So for example, if I start right here, and I get right here, that would take me down 3, 1, 2, 3, and to the right 2. Down 3, right 2. So the slope of line M is negative 3 halves. Let's do the same thing for line N. Pick any two points you want to. I'm going to start here at my intercept and go down 3, right 2. Down 3, right 2. So again, the slope of line N is negative 3 halves. Since these two slopes are equal to each other, we say that the lines are parallel. And what we're learning today is that that means a translation would map line N onto line M. All you would have to do is scoot this line over, just slide it to the right, or slide it up, or slide N to the left, or slide it down, and you would end up at line M. They would line up exactly, because they're parallel. Same idea on the next example. We need to determine whether these lines are parallel, perpendicular, or just intersecting. In order to determine that, we need to know the slopes of both lines. So let's count the slope of line M from one point to another. I go up, 1, 2, 3, and to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope of line M is 3 over 4. The slope of line N, I go down, 1, 2, 3, 4, and to the right, 3. So that would be negative four-thirds. Remember, you can count the opposite direction as well. I counted down and to the right. You could also count up and to the left. So I would go up, one, two, three, four. Going up is a positive motion. 
And then I would go to the left, one, two, three, and going to the left is a negative motion. And it works the same way with this positive three force as well, that you, instead of going up three and right four, which is a positive and a positive, you could instead go down three, which is negative, and left four, which is negative, and a negative over a negative would give you a positive. All right, so based on this information of what we got for our slopes, I can tell that these two lines are perpendicular because their slopes are opposite reciprocals. One is positive, one is negative, that's what makes them opposite. And they're reciprocals because they're the upside down version of each other. One has a three on top and a four on bottom, and the other one reverses that by putting a four on top and a three on bottom. And since these two lines are perpendicular, we know that a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. Let's take a look at this next one. They look pretty parallel, so I should just be able to say that they're parallel and that it would be a translation, right? Well, let's double check. Remember that in order for them to be parallel, their slopes have to be exactly equal. So if I go on line M, I go up one, right four, up one, right four. So the slope of line M is one fourth. But on line N, I go up one and right five, up one and right five. So that's a slope of one fifth. One fourth and one fifth are really close to being equal, but they're not actually. So these two lines are not parallel. They're actually intersecting, and I know what you're saying. No, they're not intersecting. They don't intersect on the graph, and therefore they don't intersect. But that's not entirely true. Just because you don't see the intersection on the graph that you've been given doesn't mean that they never intersect. The only way that you can actually verify that is if the two lines have exactly the same slope. These do not, so somewhere out here somewhere, eventually they will intersect each other. So even though they looked parallel, if you actually do that translation, which would map a line onto a parallel line, this is clearly not just a translation, because when you do translate it down, you can see that they don't line up perfectly. So let's try that again on this example. These two lines appear to be perpendicular. It looks like they make a right angle, but do they actually? Well, let's count their slopes. The slope of line M is up three, one, two, three, and right one. So the slope of line M is three, or three over one. Whereas the slope of line N, I go down one, two, and to the right, one, two, three, four, five. That's negative two fifths, which those two slopes seem totally different from each other. But keep in mind, we were looking for a negative one third in order for them to be perpendicular, right? And this is just one unit away in the denominator from being negative one third. If I'd gone down one, two, and to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, that would have been my negative one third slope to make it perpendicular. So these are actually pretty close to being perpendicular, which we can see visually, but they're not actually perpendicular. That just means that they're intersecting. They intersected, but not in any kind of a special way. And again, that means that a 90 degree rotation actually would not be what maps one onto the other. As you can see by this rotation, that some of it ends up kind of lined up, but as you go further off in one direction, you'll see that they start splitting away from each other. So parallel and perpendicular and translations and rotations are pretty easy to identify in the coordinate plane because you can visualize it. But what happens if we're just looking at two lines that have been expressed by equations or tables or points? It really all boils down to the same thing of what are the slopes? Because if the slopes are equal, then they're parallel, and that means it's a translation. If the slopes are opposite reciprocals, then the lines are perpendicular, which means it would be a 90 degree rotation. So for this example, it's actually pretty easy to figure out our slopes because these are written in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So this number right here is m for line m, so the slope of line m is negative one half. And the slope of line n is this number right here. That's the m x plus b part. m is the slope, so the slope is 2. And those two slopes are opposite reciprocals. Negative 1 half and positive 2 over 1 are opposite and they're reciprocal. Therefore, the lines are perpendicular. So even without graphing these two lines or seeing what they look like on a graph, you can still tell that a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. Our next example, we have slopes of negative 3 and positive three. So these two slopes are opposite, but they're not reciprocals. And that just means that these two lines are intersecting, but not in any kind of a special way. So the transformation that would map one onto the other is actually a little bit more complicated than what we'll get into today. All I want you to say is that a translation nor a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. 
Our next example is a little bit more challenging because we weren't given these equations in slope-intercept form. We are given them in standard form. So the first thing we need to do is convert from standard form to slope-intercept form. Make these equations look like y equals mx plus b. In other words, solve for y. So if I'm going to try to get y alone, I would subtract x from both sides to get started. And then I would need to divide everything by negative 5. Now be careful here. Remember there is really a 1 in front of that x, or negative 1 in this case. Don't tell me that it's 5 or negative 5. It is 1 fifth. It is 1 over 5. The negative over a negative cancels to a positive. And then 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. By the way, this negative 4 really doesn't matter at all for what we're doing today. That's our intercept, and the intercept doesn't matter when we're talking about parallel or perpendicular. Really all we care about is this 1 fifth number. So let's take a look at line n and see what this turns into when we convert it to slope-intercept form. I'll start by adding 2x to both sides, and then I'll divide everything by 10, and I get 1 fifth x, and again, we do get minus 6, but that's not particularly relevant for our goal for today. All I really care about is that the slopes are equal. Since the slopes are equal, the lines are parallel, and since the lines are parallel, a translation would map one onto the other. Well, what if I don't even give you an equation? What if I just know a couple of points on each line? What do I do then? Well, all I really need to know is the slope. Like what I said on the last example, we don't care about the y-intercept. All we need to know is what the slopes are. And that's what slope formula is for. Not slope-intercept form. That's y equals mx plus b. Slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Just subtract the values for the y's and subtract the values for the x's and divide. And that tells you the slope of the line. So let's give it a try. m, which is slope, is equal to 5 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. Subtract 4 over 2, and turns out line m has a slope of 2. All right, let's see about line n. Again, we'll just use slope formula, y2 minus y1. Careful there, that is a minus minus, so that should be written as a plus, over x2 minus x1. So negative 2 plus 6 is 4, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so again that reduces to 2. We see that these two lines have equal slopes, and therefore they are parallel, and since they're parallel, a translation would map one onto the other. You can do essentially the same thing when you're given a table. Remember, tables are really just too much information for when you're trying to calculate slope, because for slope you only need two points. And that's actually pretty good news, because I see a bunch of ugly numbers in these tables that I'd rather not deal with. So when you're looking at a table, remember you can pick any point, any coordinate pair that you want to. I'd rather not deal with these decimal numbers for uh, x value of 1 and an x value of 3. They have decimal values for their y's. I'd just rather not deal with that. So I'm going to pick the point 0, 5 and the point 2, 2 to plug into slope formula. So y2 minus y1, that's 2 minus 5, over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 0. Simplify that out and we get negative 3 halves. Let's try the same thing for line n. Again, I see some pretty messy values that I'd just rather not deal with, so I'm going to stick to the point 0, negative 7, and 3, negative 5. So here we go. Negative 5 minus minus 7, or a better way of saying that is negative 5 plus 7, over 3 minus 0. Simplify that out, and we get 2 over 3. So the slopes are negative 3 halves and positive 2 thirds, which are opposite reciprocals because one is a negative, one is a positive, and they're the upside-down version of each other. That means that these two lines are perpendicular, and since they're perpendicular, a 90-degree rotation would map one onto the other. So let's try that again. Again, I see some ugly points. I'd rather not deal with that, so I'm going to pick the point 2, 9, and 0, 4 to calculate my slope. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and I get 5 halves for the slope of line m. But then when I come over here to line n, I don't have a choice. I'm going to have to use one of the decimals. But that's okay. It still works. It's just a little bit harder. So I'll do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that gives me 0.4 over 1. Now you might be looking at these two answers and thinking, wow, those are totally different from each other. But remember that 0.4 over 1, well, or just 0.4 really, is a fraction. It would be 2 fifths. So we can see that these two lines have reciprocal slopes, but they're not opposites because they're both positive. 
So these two lines are just intersecting, which means neither a translation nor a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. And in our final example, we'll just put everything all together. We have a table, we have a graph, and we have an equation. And I want to know which lines are parallel, which ones are perpendicular, which ones are intersecting, and what transformations would map one onto the other. Let's begin with line L. All of these are nice pretty numbers, so you kind of get to pick whichever ones you want. I'm just going to pick the first two. So I'll just do 5 minus 9 for y2 minus y1, and then I'll do 1 minus 0 for x2 minus x1. And when I simplify that all out, I get negative 4. Line M is a graph, which remember from earlier in the lesson, you can just count the slope. So I'm going to go up 1 and right 4, or you could also go down 1 and left 4. Either way, you would get 1 over 4. And finally, line N is nicely written in slope-intercept form, so we can identify the slope quite easily as negative 4. So what do we see here? I see that line L has a slope of negative 4, and line N also has a slope of negative 4. That means that these two lines are parallel. I also notice that the third slope, 1 fourth, is the opposite reciprocal of both of these. So line M would have to be perpendicular to both line L and line N. So since line L is perpendicular to line M, a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. Likewise, since line M and line N are perpendicular, a rotation of 90 degrees would map one onto the other. If you don't believe me, you could graph it. Like actually put this line on the graph, start at 7, and go down 4 and right 1, down 4 and right 1, and you would see a line that looks like this, which is perpendicular. And you could do the same thing by plotting these points and showing that they're perpendicular. And remember that the slope of line L was negative 4, the slope of line N was negative 4, those are equal, so those two lines are parallel, and that means that a translation would map one onto the other. And that's all you need to know about identifying transformations to map parallel and perpendicular lines onto each other. In our next lesson, we'll be discussing how to calculate the shortest distance between two lines, as well as the shortest distance between a point and a line.